Okay, here we go. Welcome to Bigfoot Fibers. Um, and I messed that up. Here we go. I do it again. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome to Bigfoot Knitcast. Okay, we're off on the right foot. I always mess up and it's usually somewhere at the beginning, but that cannot be guaranteed. It might be anywhere. So you can just laugh with me. I hope you don't spit your coffee out. <laughs> We're going to jump right in to the prize winners from episode 15 just in a second and um, I just wanted to kind of touch base with where I why I'm a few days late on this podcast so we'll just blame it on brain power and lack of sleep no that that would really be nice but um, as soon as I posted episode 15 I got a migraine and it lasted about 10 days so I when I get headaches like that I tend to lose my inner calendar like I normally have just a running um kind of a calendar going on in my head and um anyway I lost a week and it's not that I lost it I just I misplaced it I don't know it wasn't there and so I was thinking that I needed to podcast again the week after but um, my goal is to podcast every two weeks, not every week, because A, I don't knit that fast, and B, I'm sure you don't want to listen to me that often. <laughs> so um, I can't. I just can't knit that fast to have enough stuff to talk about. And because I die also, and I'm getting ready for Dallas, and it's starting to be show season, um, of course that would be a lot, it, it would be, um, well, it would just be boring. <laughs> So, hi, how's the weather where you are? It's March and it has come in a little bit like a lion here in Oklahoma. Right now the wind is blowing, um, I would love to say a million miles an hour. There are times it sounds like it's going to blow down the house, but it's actually just 25 mile an hour south winds and I don't know what the gusts are, but we don't normally get winds like that here in Tulsa. Not I mean, we might get some wind with some storms, but we don't get just wind. Now, where my husband is from, um, so, not not southwest Oklahoma, but he the, he grew up south and west of the Oklahoma City, so more in central Oklahoma. They have sustained wind all the time there. It just blows. It's either blowing from the north or it's blowing from the south. It just blows. But it's not like that here. Um, where he is from, all the windmill farms have gone up, so they have got in the last few years they have tons and tons I say few I don't know maybe the last eight years they have tons of windmills there now so there you go there that's my excuse as to why it's all kind of messed up and I had posted it on Instagram and um, maybe even on Facebook that hey <laughs> they were gonna have another podcast and the winners are gonna be announced and then it didn't happen because it wasn't supposed to and because I had a headache um, so there you go. Now, I was going to mention really quickly also that we do have a Facebook group. Um, it's a private group. So I have a Facebook page for Bigfoot, Bigfoot Fibers. And um, the podcast and Bigfoot Fibers are all kind of just rolled into one when you're dealing with Facebook and, and Instagram. Um, it's a little more separate on Instagram, I feel like. I don't know why, but um, when you're talking about Facebook, it just kind of gets all blech into the same pot. So um, I created a private group for Bigfoot. It's called Fans of Bigfoot Fibers, maybe. But it's on there, and you can request to join, and it's just chit-chats. I've got most of the sample knitters, the knitters that have, have knitted up samples for me, not test knitters. I am learning how to, to design, but I have only had one design that has been test knit, and that was scrapped. <laughs> Mary Jo, you're a lifesaver. It just needed to be changed. So, you know, sometimes those are the things you learn the most from, those mistakes that you go, oh, I'm so glad you're my good friend, and you can laugh with me and not at me. <laughs> so, there you go. So, the, um, so the, um, there you go. There's my... There's my loop. I'm, I'm looping. I need to reset. Ta-da! Bigfoot Fibers. You can find us on Facebook with the business page. You can find us in the private Facebook group. You can find us on Ravelry. I have a Ravelry group. As you know, that's where all the contests for the podcasts are 
played on um, because it's easiest for me to be able to select a winner with random number generator. I can say, you know, that there are 49 entrants, then I can put in, mine's always the first post, so I can put in number two to number 49 and hit generate and it just pops up a number and then I go see whose post is that number and it works out beautifully. I don't have to type in names or put it in a spreadsheet or any of those kinds of things that I know other people do. This is just works out the simplest for me. Um, so I know I have some people just wait, just waiting. I'm trying to draw that out just a little bit to make you kind of hang on the, on, uh, what is that called? When you're not, you're hanging, it's not a cliffhanger. You're not hanging on every word. You're on pins and needles. That's what it's called. So as long as you're kind of on pins and needles for a minute or two, then I'm happy about that. Um, so obviously I'm on Instagram. I don't play very many giveaways over there. There are a few. And um, honestly, I'm my. it's my goal that the newsletter is honestly the, um, the most, I don't want to say prized possession, the, um, the, the best place to play. So the Ravelry group right now is, like I said, is where all the podcast um, giveaways happen. Um, I, I like to, I, I want for the newsletter to be something that um, you're not going, oh, one more email. Because really, I, I have a lot of email. I think right now in my Yahoo, I have 13,000 emails. <laughs> so I'm going through and just trying to unsubscribe and delete, you know, a few a day. After about five unsubscribes, it starts to kind of make the hair on the back of my neck stand up and it just kind of, yeah, I'd almost rather delete them than, and have to face them again tomorrow. But some, some, and I'm not talking about yarn or fiber people, but some companies email you like every day thinking, why, why? I don't even want to hear from my family that often. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, unless you've got some super duper deal for me, children's place, don't be emailing me and 25% off is not going to cut it every day. Don't, don't email me every day. <laughs> so I try to be very careful and respectful of the newsletter, um, you know, the email that I send out. I want it to be valuable and I want it to be fun and I want it to be, at least you get a, you know, a smile from it and not always go, somebody's trying to sell me something else. Okay. Um, newsletters, so I would tell you, newsletters are hard for me because it's got to be a blend of what's going on in the Bigfoot Fibers world, and at the same time, I mean, how else will you know what I have to sell if I don't tell you? But at the same time, blah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't personally want more sales emails, so I try to mix that up a little bit. And in case you're wondering, I am working on the. March newsletter right now. So, um, what else is happening in Bigfoot Fibers world? Well, Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Festival is coming up, and that is the beginning of April. Um, I think I'll be going down in on the fifth, and I think it's uh, it starts on setup is on Thursday, so I think it opens on Friday. Franklin Habit is the keynote speaker, and um, the Yarn Harlot is going to be there. I can't wait. I hope I get to meet her, maybe get her autograph. I have several of her books, and I just think she's the funniest thing ever. As I spray spit on the camera and talk, I, I don't know what. It's not even morning. What's my problem? Oh, so I got a new Apple Watch, speaking of Dallas-Fort Worth. And the reason why is that um, I don't want to have to have my phone on my person the whole time in case my family needs me or needs to text me or call me, because you, you never know. I have kids at home aged 2 to 17, and most of the time everybody knows what they need to do, but if dad has to run out, and they, I just feel better if they can contact me. So I, I use that as my excuse to get an Apple Watch. Um, but the point of that was I downloaded this Groovy Sleep app, and I can't even remember the name of it, but it's supposed to like track your sleep. And it's no wonder I have these, I'm looking in the camera now, I have these huge circles. I'm only getting like, even though I'm going to bed, I'm only asleep for like six and a half hours at the most. And I think it's telling me that like three of those hours are quality sleep, whatever that means. And my deep sleep is 
<laughs> none. I have nights where it's like none. I think it was three minutes one night and 40 minutes another night. And I think you're supposed to get more than that. I seem to remember that from reading something somewhere sometime. <laughs> See, there you go. That's why I can't remember anything because I'm not getting any sleep. Okay, so I don't know if you've got any sleep tips on how to get deeper sleep. I, I think I have a really good idea of how to make that happen. It has to do with this person in bed next to you snoring. That's, that's really what I think it is. <laughs> Poor Mr. Bigfoot. Okay, I think I have pins and needled those winners long enough. So let's get to that. So the episode 15 winners, if you remember... There was yarn from, let's see, can I do this? This is going to be good. Yakamamo. Yaka, Yakamamo. I did it. I think I did it. Yakamamo. Let me say it one more time. Let me say that one more time. It's a tongue twister. Yakamamo Textiles. Woohoo! I did it. So there was yarn from Yakamamo Textiles. There was a, um, <laughs> now I've gotten myself off because I'm so excited I said it right. There was a, um, Project bag from Hikari, handmade bags. And if you've not seen those, you need to go and check her out. Her bags on Etsy are amazing, amaze balls. There was a, um, a traveler's journal from AOR Journals. There was yarn from Beloved Yarn, Cool Cat Fiberworks, Kyla's Lab, and of course, some Bigfoot Fibers yarn. So let's see, my eyes are watering and I have all the windows shut. So I don't know what the deal is, but we went straight from, straight from flu season that's my kiddo that's in Tulsa Youth Opera. I don't know if you can hear her or not, but you'll hear all kinds of things in the background of you'll hear all kinds of things in the background of my podcast. Sometimes you get to see the dogs running around and one time I know I had the kitchen in view. <laughs> oh well. So, without further ado, the winner for the Yakamamo Textiles yarn is J Trip I'm going to mess this up. Her rivalry name is Jay Trapathy, and it's Jasmine in Georgia. So, yay. And then the AOR Journals, Travelers, um, the Knitting Travelers Journal is Zukaila, and that's Carolyn in Texas. Yay. The Hikari Handmade Bag winner is Darb Darb, and I'm not sure what her first name is, but she's in New York. Yay. The Beloved Yarn winner is Knitting Dancer on Ravelry, and she's Teresa in Alabama. And then we have Cool Cat Fiberworks yarn, and that goes to Crafty Vance, and she's Courtney in Oklahoma. Yay, and Oki. And then Kyla's Lab, um, that winner is Angelic Embers, and she is Nicole in New Jersey. I would try to do a New Jersey accent, but you guys would all laugh at me because I know I have the Hick Oki accent going on. So the Hick, yeah, that's not even going to work. And the Bigfoot Fibers yarn winner is Asteride. And she is Patrizia in Portugal. So yay, all of you winners. That's so exciting. I love winning things. Okay, so the rest of this podcast is going to be just, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown of what's coming out in the shop in just a few. And then I'm going to show you my whips. And you can, you can virtually, you know, whip me with wet noodles because... I'm going really, really slow. My sample knitters are rocking it. I, I'm telling you, I've got two shawls already. In like a week, these ladies whipped up these shawls. And I'll show those to you next time. Because I don't have them in my physical possession yet. Um, but they're on their way. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then um, my oldest is knitting socks. And then I have another person knitting socks. And hi, Patty. And then um, what else? I'm forgetting. I, oh, and there's another shawl out there. So how fun is that? That's I, I'm having to do that because I just, it's really pathetically sad where I'm at on my comfort fade cardi. So there you go. It's just what the way life is. Um, <laughs> it's just busy right now, and it's not going to get any better with all the shows. So I mentioned the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Show in um, in April. Two weeks later, I'm headed to Kansas City. So if you're in the Kansas City area, you need to come and say hi. At Knitting in the Heartland, 
And then in July, I'll be here in Kellyville, Oklahoma. We have a festival called Fiber Christmas in July, and that promises to be another good fun time. And then, um, what is after that? Oh, I applied, and I'm, I'm waiting on pins and needles to find out if I got in to the Indie Untangled Trunk Show at Rhinebeck. Indie Untangled people, if you're listening, email her and say, let Bigfoot Fibers in. Hi, sweetheart. Mine died. Okay, go tell Aiden to charge it, to put it on the charger for you. Um, I asked Emma if I could borrow her, she said no. Okay, go ask Aiden to fix it for you. So this is a special time. School is all done, and everyone gets to play on their Kindles while Mom is doing the podcast, but unfortunately, one of them died. <laughs> So we've got to go find a charger and fix that. Luckily, we have Big Brother to help out with that. And Mom doesn't have to stop rolling in order to get that done. So after the October show at Rhinebeck, which, you know, I'm, we'll see if that happens. Um, I, can't even, I can't even breathe. That one is so terrifying if I were to get in and excited, and exciting and, and scary at the same time. Um, Dallas is my first big girl show, and I'm really kind of scared about that one, too. <laughs> but it's going to be fun, right? Um, after Rhinebeck, then I am scheduled to do the East Texas Fiber Festival again, and that one was a ton of fun. So come and see us in Lindale if you're around the East Texas area. We even had people come for, in from Louisiana last year. And then um, I think that wraps it up. I don't know. I can't remember at this point. So, there you go. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. And right uh, today, I'm not showing any more giveaway yarn today, but I do, I know I have more yarn sent from other dyers that are is sitting in my P.O. box right now. I just didn't have time to go check it. So the next time I podcast, there'll be more. And we're, the way we're going to play that giveaway is going to be a little bit different I participated in the February Yarn Love Challenge that Nalia Plasky Designs put on on Instagram, and that was a really fun thing, and I had never thought about doing this before, and you may have seen in my show notes that I was ranting about, why did I work the, the giveaway this way? That was a little bit too much um, trouble for everyone to enter. So the way Nalia did it, and if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm so sorry, you guys all just know you can just laugh at me because I butcher every name, right? Um, and the way that she did it was every indie dyer that participated, one, they all sent yarn, but um, one person won the whole thing. So I think there were 23 indie dyers that participated and one, one winner took away all of the yarn. And I think that is just a very fun way to do that. So that's the way we're going to play next time. And who knows what there will be. It'll be fun. But one winner is going to take away all of the yarn. And whatever else goodies get sent in. So fun, 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 right? Okay, so right now in the shop, I, I posted these this morning. And you're probably not going to see this until tomorrow. Today is the, today's the 6th. So you this probably won't get loaded, uploaded until late tonight or early tomorrow morning so as of right now I posted these this morning and there's only one left but don't not to despair I'm dying more this weekend this is self striping and we kind of haven't really settled on a name right now on the shop it's called Emerald Isle and maybe that'll stick maybe it won't but it's self striping and it's Mr. Bigfoot has not um, wound it all up yet so um, this has this is in a very long hank and it has to be re in order to dye it it has to be in a really big circumference and um you can't do anything with that on a regular swift there i mean I'm, i know you can make a swift big enough to handle it but the point in that is mr bigfoot has not rescained it yet so there you go there's there's that and what it uh the light is kind of blowing it out i'm sorry this is not gonna maybe mm, well there you go when you use natural lighting you're just kind of stuck with what you get um this is two different colors 
and then in the middle sandwiched in the middle is white this it looks like it's glowing it's really not glowing that's just white and with um, speckles so that's what it is two different colors of green with uh, sandwiched in the middle is green speckles Let's see if that'll show up no aha uh -huh. what oh there we go that's a little bit better Okay, so I give up on that one. And then, so that that's going, uh, that's in the shop right now. There's just one left, sorry, and maybe there won't be by the time you hear this, but um, how fun is that? And then I don't watch much TV. That's kind of a joke with people who have a big family. And if you can't, if you didn't hear that, um, the reason why it's called Bigfoot Knitcast, Bigfoot Fibers, Bigfoot Podcast, um, is the snarky comment that a lady made at Walmart in our uh, about our big carbon footprint. So um, don't you have a TV? Don't you know what causes that? Oh my gosh, do you know how big a carbon footprint you have? <laughs> so that that is all to say that I don't watch very much TV. I'm too busy to do that. Um, and if I'm going to sit down and knit, then I'm going to watch other things, whether it be um, a other podcasts or what have you so I have watched all of season one and two of Victoria and I have absolutely loved what they've done with the show it's amazing I love the characters I love the costuming I think they've done a great job so I was kind of inspired to in the in the middle of trying to recreate one of my old colorways for a custom order I inadvertently, it was kind of a, it wasn't a mess up because I don't know what you would call it. So it was an oopsie in the dye pot, only it was, okay, we're not quite there in the dye pot. And I thought, oh, I really like that. I'm coming back to that. I'm going to have to do that again. And the first thing I thought of was, it reminded me of Twal. Well, I don't have a tattoo, but if I did have a tattoo, it would be in twall. I love twall. I love twall bags. I love twall curtains. I don't use it everywhere. It's just more of a, a pop of an accent um, in very small places, but I might surround myself with it if I could get away with it. So to say that, the opening credits of Victoria, there's that wallpaper that's behind her as she kind of changes, um, she's got the longer youthful look with her hair and then she's got that kind of first crowned appearance and then they kind of put her hair up and she looks a little more majestic and mature. And the whole time that's going on with that, that kind of blue on blue or silver on blue um, and, and it's not a twall wallpaper. It's sort of, I really don't know what it's called because I'm not a big wallpaper person. I know, I don't even really know what the pattern is called, but you might go check it out. But it, that's kind of what it reminded me of. It, it was, it was, had a twall impression just a little bit. And the reason I'm telling you that is the progression of the, my first impression of what I did on this yarn was, ooh, that looks like twall. And then the second impression was that really captures that Victoria, Victorian-esque kind of feel. So... The opening credits song is called, well, I don't know if it's called, I really don't know what the name of it is, but they sing Gloriana. And so this is Gloriana. And I thought, how fitting is it to put it on BFL? See if I can get it out of this, the direct light so you can see that. So I put it on BFL and this is 100% super washed British BFL. Um, and it is super washed. I think I said that 437 yards. It's on 100 grams and I absolutely love it. There are a few left in the shop and it does not have. Um, so let me just talk about BFL for half a second. BFL is way sturdier than Merino. It has this has a very slight halo. Can you see? Let's see if I can move it to where you can see that just a little bit. Can you kind of see that halo? Um, it's a very slight halo. It has um, just a little bit more of a bite. You can just a little bit feel those scales a little bit more than you can on Merino. But otherwise, it is almost as soft as Merino. But it is hard wearing. So you don't have to add nylon to BFL 
to not wear through your socks. The other thing is it is soft enough. I don't have makeup on my neck, so it, it's soft enough. You can wear it next to your skin. It does not have that, um, just that 100% wool, whatever, uh, uh, just a wool, whatever they call new wool, it's not um, merino. It doesn't have that feel to it. So I, I think that BFL is a wonderful, wonderful yarn to work with and it makes great garments and it makes great everything. Okay, there's my commercial. Next, because I'm really on this Victoria streak, well, if, if, if the opening credits need their own yarn, then Victoria needs her own yarn. I'm gonna work on that this weekend. But also Albert, Albert needs his own yarn, right? So this is the Albert inspired yarn. Now, when you think about Queen Victoria, she was proper, she was, you know, she was short, she was petite, she was um, very mannerly, and their whole marriage was characterized by um, family and, and being, um, there weren't any scandals that happened um, either either with her or with him while they were married. Um, they had nine children, I think, and domestic domesticity was a very big thing for them. They really wanted to try to have a normal family. So in the show, Albert is portrayed as um, he's he's got this German accent, even though he's a British actor, um, but he does it fairly well, and he's kind of got this subtle 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 reserved yet very strong personality um so he's kind of cool and i found the inspiration for this from a picture of the two of them together which i think they're actually the actors the actor and actress are dating which makes it even just sweeter but um I have a picture of the two of them in costume as they step out and Albert is dressed completely in black. He's got um, this very, very sharp black suit on, the, the, the top um, coat and then the, the pants are black. And then his vest, of course he's got the bow tie, and but his vest is this grayish color and it's got um, embroidered flowers on it. And it's very subtle, but at the same time, I feel like it just embodies Albert's character as it pops out there with that, you know, it's the underlayer. It's not this on the top, on the surface, out there in your face, but underneath there, it's bright and um, it, it, there you go. So without further ado, this had to be on Yak and Merino. So it's a Merino, 70% Merino. 20% um, yak and 10% nylon blend. So it's luxurious, but it's subtle and it's stately. And at the same time, it has strength. So here you go. Here is Albert. And I tried to pick out all the colors that were embroidered on that vest and yet not overpower it with the black power suit that he had on. So there is Albert. And then Victoria, she's coming. She's coming. I haven't decided exactly, but I have I have an idea. I'm not I'm not gonna spoil the surprise. And then um, speaking of, of flowers and spring, there are I, I restocked this, but there's just two left in the shop. And this is um, Robin remixed, and it looks like Robin's egg. Um, you know, she's got those colors of a robin's egg in there. And this is on Mama Squatch, which is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And it's Mama Squatch because mamas deserve a little bit of luxury for all the things that we do for our families. And then this is kind of a special little surprise as I was going through and doing inventory. Um, I came across these. I forgot that I had them. I did these for the Loops Love Retreat back in February, and they are, I'm hiding myself, but that's not what I need to hide. There we go. Um, these are called the Oklahoma Fade Set, and they, I've only had three of these. That's all I had. I guess I just, I'm not sure why I had three extra, but I had three extra. Um, oh, I know, I think I had to knit, I had to dye up a few so that they could knit samples. Um, so that's why I had some odd numbers. But there you go, I have three of these left. It's the colors of the Oklahoma Fade set, and I think I've got those kind of in order. There we go. 
I'll turn those this way. And I'll put this paper back over here to block that. Who says you need a diffuser? There you go. Um, so there you go. It's a mini skein set, and it's got all five colors. The Elkhoma Fade actually has six colors, but um, when you're dealing with mini skein sets, um, it's just easier to wind those all off into have those off into um, five 20 gram skeins. So you get it's um, it's an awesome sock base. It's 75% um, superwash merino and 25% nylon. Each mini is 92 yards, 20 grams. Five of them, you get 100 grams. I love minis. Um, one of the samples that's coming is a shawl that is knit in minis. It's called um, Ice Cream Parlor. You might remember it from last summer, that mini skein set. And the lovely knitter that knitted that, she knitted the, sand, the shawl um, close to you, which is one of the ones I recommend for minis all the time. Um, and then this one also is, this is Hohe's Gradient Band Cowl, and this was knit in minis. And um, I'll, sh I'll give you a little sneak peek of Victoria's base because this is what hers is going to be. So the minis are just the awesome sock base, and they're, this is the set called um, Only Five Shades of Gradient. And I'm going to have a couple of those coming on to the shop as well. Remember that I'm moving the Etsy shop. I still have one or two things just in case people who only knew that I was on Etsy maybe can't find me on the website. The website is bigfootfibers.com. And so everything is going to get moved over there. And then, so there you go. Um, then this is not the color, but it is the base that Victoria is going to be on. And it is, if I remember correctly, it is 25% silk and 75% merino. And you can see, I mean, yes, I love tonal. I'm spitting again. Um, I love tonal the dye process for tonal. That's my favorite thing to do um, because I love, it makes my heart skip a beat to see those variations in color. Um, so the silk and the merino play very well together to create that tonalness without having to do a whole lot else to it. Okay, commercial's over, moving on. If you want to see my poor progress, I had I was determined to get to the sleeves, um, to breaking my sleeves, not breaking them, but to separating my sleeves, and I didn't do it. I'm not there yet. I'm still on the increases. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's not Andrea's fault. I'm still on the increases. It's my fault. Um, I can't knit this at knit night in my knitting circle because they're all people that I'm teaching how to knit and so um, they all need help all the time so I have to take something that's just mindless like you know socks or something um, because that way I can set it down and pick it up <laughs> I did try that I, I did do that once and I've I have dropped a marker and now I'm one stitch off <laughs> I just can't knit and talk at the same time apparently okay so here we go this is all of the length that I have this is the, the rolling up cast on edge, and here you go. There's there's all my progress. Here's my back. I've still got about, um, I can't remember, 16 or 18 stitches to add to the body. I think my sleeves are finally there, but on my fronts, I've still got maybe eight more, um, I think it's eight more increases to go, and um, I may have dropped one stitch on my on one sleeve so there you go there's my sad lack of progress but um, I am almost into my third color kind of lost track of where I was should have been fading <laughs> oh well there's a lot going on with a fade let me tell you I'll, I'm excited to get down to separate the sleeves and then just knit just knit just knit it's not a hard sweater it's not a hard pattern I, I think um, I really do like the knitted side better, so I may try and make it to where it's um, I can use either side, but I don't think that's going to be a very hard thing. Here we go. And then the other whip that, that you would have interest in, because all the rest of them are languishing to the point of just, <laughs> it's sad. Um, if you have a two-year whip, does that count? I don't know. Is it still a whip at that point? And this is my, the other Hohe pattern that I'm, I'm working on. This is the three color cashmere cowl. 
and I am in the stripes so not a whole ton of progress but this is Lux Adorna she was at the Loops Love Retreat and it's the only thing that I bought when I was there um, you know you spend two or three days standing around in all yarn <laughs> I caved to the cashmere fumes I couldn't help it so I love this um, I, I really do love this not just the colors but the yarn itself I, I don't know if you can see that look at that stitch definition I, I am really really liking it and it is so soft so I have been scouring for a silk and cashmere blend that is more cashmere than silk. I This is just 100% cashmere, but I think silk and cashmere play well together, and so look for that soon as a base that I'm offering. These are, I'm knitting on um, Likey. I just started carrying Likey needles in the shop, and I had never knit with them before, but they had such rave reviews and everybody loved them. I am, I am a Haya Haya girl. I like really, really sharp needles. Let's see if you can see that. These are not quite the sharp, um, I wouldn't pick these. If they hadn't had such high reviews, I would not have picked those. But I will tell you, I am really very impressed with them. That I don't split the yarn any more than I do with anything else. Um, I think that they're really almost sharper than the Chai Gu lace and you may disagree with me but um, that may be because I don't split the yarn as much as I do with the Chai Gu's. Chai Gu get burrs. I, the way I knit I guess I rub my needles together more than I pick them up. Maybe that's why I don't make that clicking noise. Um, I thought I was doing something wrong when I first started knitting because I was like why don't my needles click together? I thought you're, they're supposed to click when you knit and they never did and I, I think that's why. But I get a burr where I rub them together so as I'm knitting I don't know if I can even show you let's see here where am I at here we go so let's see if we can get a close-up of that as I knit come around and then I just kind of slide the needles I don't really they don't really click and so as I'm inserting on this side and it rubs and then I wrap and then I'm rubbing again on this underside here I tend to get a burr on chai goose and they're not there when I start and then after about halfway through a project I have a burr and it I'm telling you it puts a burr in my saddle every single time I have <laughs> I'll just leave it at that but I I really like the high high sharps I haven't had but um, two needles out of two sets that I had any problems with at all and they replaced those for me without any hassle at all so um, those actually came with burrs like they they were machined and they just missed them I guess as they were machining them and then so that was that was one set and then the other set the join um, the join was it never joined all the way you couldn't tighten it enough there was always a lip and so when you're knitting socks and you've got just even a little bit, it was just shredding the yarn as it went through over that. Um, and you know, they replaced them, it was not a problem. So I like really, really sharp. My Chai Goos are lace tips. Um, I love the Haya Haya Sharps, not not the regular Haya Haya. I have tried um, um, the rock, the, sock, the Addy Sock Rockets and I'm not, that impressed with them um, it's just the way that I knit I need it to be really slick and I need it to be really sharp and the, sh the, the sharpness um, is is good on on these they're not as sharp as what I normally knit with but they're fine and the slickness these are as slick as any metal needles I have knit with with the exception of I'm telling you that now the sock the sock rockets that the, the um, the Addy needles just really aren't that slick to me. So it may just be, you know, I don't know, my sweat or my hand sweat or chemistry or I don't know, it's something, but it's just really not that slick to me. It might be to everyone else in the world. It may just be that I'm special. <laughs> there you go. That's my knitting needle diatribe soapbox. I'll get down off of that. And then, so we're done. Um, 
it is, it, it's a kind of a short podcast, but I wanted you to be able to just kind of hang in, visit with me, have a cup of tea, and then let, let you know who the winners are, let you know I didn't fall off the planet, and um, my my plan is to podcast every other Friday. So today is Tuesday. That means that this, the next podcast, oh, I, I do have to look in a calendar, really. The next podcast is going to be, I'm a pen and paper gal. So there you go. I need to see it in a planner. And I, I love my happy planner. Today is the fifth sixth today's the sixth so the next podcast will be on the 15th during the Edinburgh Yarn Festival which I will not be at but that's okay um there you go that's that's when that will come out and or well I actually said on the 15th and I'm looking at Thursday see what's the problem it's going to be on the 16th so look for that coming out late the 16th evening or early the 17th and I'm still dying up a ton for Dallas, so the shop updates are going to be just kind of little piddlies. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm terrified that I won't have enough yarn for Dallas. I don't want to go and look like, you know, like I said, it's my first big girl show, and I don't want to go and look like a total newbie. <laughs> I know I've the shop has been open for a year, and I'm not a total newbie, but it just... I just have that fear of walking in there and everybody's going to know more than me. Like I dream about, I'm, I'm walking there and I'm naked, right? I'm <laughs> that's what it feels like to go in there without enough yarn. So my goal is to take a thousand skeins with me. Um, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to, I don't know that I'm going to get there, but we're getting close. We're, uh, well, I say we're getting close. We're not, we're not getting, I'm not quite even halfway. So I'm not stressing about it was what I meant to say not quite close but not going to stress um my booth is only 10 foot by 5 foot so it's on the kind of newbie row and they did that on purpose so that newer dyers could get in there without the pressure of having to fill a huge 10 by 10 booth which you know it's not that huge but there you go i'm in the big girl world so I've got to put my big girl pants on and, and get down there with enough yarn to make a showing and have enough yarn to go to Kansas City two weeks later. <laughs> so I'm crazy. I bit off a lot and we're just going to chew it up one bite at a time. That's how you eat an elephant, if you didn't know. One bite at a time. Okay, really? Going to let you go get back to your day and your week and I hope it's a great one. And I will see you in about a week and a half again. And there will be more prizes to give away then. More yarn, more goodies. So there you go. See you guys. <laughs>